my mother-in-law has been collecting plates. A lot of plates. Unfortunately, she's never had a proper spot in their home to display them. So one weekend visit, she asked me if I could build her a shelf to mount on this wall in the living room. Now, to save on cost, she also requested that the entire shelf be built from this single piece of 3 4 inch plywood. Challenge accepted. Okay, designing a custom shelf for collectible plates is not as easy as it sounds. For one thing, not all plates are created equal. While most of them may have a round shape, they do have different diameters. This means in order to maximize the materials, in this case a single piece of plywood, the measurements and cuts have to be carefully thought out so that after everything has been said and done, the shelf will have enough compartments to accommodate the most number of plates of varying sizes. And the challenge is even made more difficult if you're aiming for a symmetrical design. Now, having said that, this video isn't about showing you the precise measurements I took nor the detailed steps I did so you could build an exact copy of this custom shelf for my mother-in-law. Instead, what I will share in this video is my thought process why certain steps were done in a certain way keeping in mind very specific considerations, like the limited materials, the strength of the structure to support several collectible plates along with supporting its own weight, the fact that it's going to be mounted on a wall, and its ability to keep the plates from sliding off. The first consideration is the material for the structure. We chose a sheet of plywood because relative to metal, it is way cheaper. It is easier to cut and piece together without special tools. And also, it is lighter and inflexible. Two characteristics that I think is great for shelves. And why 3 4 inch? Why not half an inch or a quarter of an inch? Well, first of all, let me explain about nominal thickness and actual thickness when it comes to plywood. While the length and width are often the actual dimensions, typically 4 feet wide by 8 feet tall, the nominal thickness is usually different than the actual thickness. This means that whenever you go to the hardware store and ask for a 3 4 inch plywood, you're actually going to receive something slightly thinner than 3 4 inch, always. 3 4 is the nominal thickness or in name only and the actual thickness is usually 23 over 32 inches. So, regardless if you're ordering for 3 4 1 half, or 1 4 inch thick plywood, the actual thickness will always be at least 1 over 32 inches thinner. There are a few reasons why the actual thickness of plywood varies. The most common is that wood shrinks as it dries, and moisture leaves the wood. This means that a sheet of plywood that started at 3 4 inch may shrink slightly after manufacturing. And no, the hardware store will not give you a discount for a 3 4 inch plywood just because it's actually thinner than 3 4 inch. It is what it is in the industry. Anyway, going back, I chose 3 4 inch thick because from my experience, it is the optimal thickness for building strong shelves and cabinetry. Anything thinner would simply be too flimsy to hold heavy stuff, even to hold their own weight. If you have a good design or plan, you've already accomplished half the project. The other half is just a matter of executing the plan. I was lucky because my mother-in-law had a very clear vision of what her collectible plate shelf should look like. In fact, when we arrived at their home, the first thing she showed me was her design which she drew on her notebook, complete with the number of compartments and measurements. She also knew the exact number of plates along with their respective diameters that she wanted to showcase. We even grouped them into small, medium, and large because she was very particular about placing the smallest plates at the far ends, the largest ones at the center, and the medium ones in between. Heck, she even anticipated some allowance in the middle to potentially expand from a 3x3 grid into a 4x4 grid. All I had to do was copy her design at scale on this piece of paper and make minor adjustments on the measurements to factor in the actual thickness of the plywood in respect to the spacing of each compartment.
After double checking our numbers, we were able to determine without a doubt that a single sheet of plywood will produce enough panels to build a shelf that can hold at least 39 of our collectible plates. We agreed that the shelf will be 3 inches deep, meaning it will be protruding 3 inches from the wall when mounted. Since the plywood is 4 feet or 48 inches wide and 8 feet or 96 inches long, I was able to cut 16 panels that were 3 by 96 inches each. In total, I needed 50 different pieces of varying lengths that would make up the shelves, outer frame, vertical and horizontal inner panels, and its wall mounting braces. So that I don't get confused, I labeled the pieces with what their final length should be and what part of the shelf they are for. This way, when I drew my cut lines and did the actual cuts, there was very little room for error. Okay, so far, these are the outer frames left and right panels, the top and bottom panels, and these 8 pieces over here will make up the inner vertical panels. I will assemble all of these first before I cut these that will eventually make up the shelves inner horizontal panels. But day 1 is over, so I piled all of my materials and tools in this area, away from the sun, the rain, and the dogs. Today is day 2, and I've laid out all the pieces that will form the shelves outer frame and the inner vertical panels. The goal was to stand them up like this, make sure everything was squared, before I joined them together with three types of fasteners. First were these 2 inch nails to hold two pieces in place but still allowed me to make adjustments in the angle. Second were these 2 inch wood screws to lock in the joints so they were held in place. And third was wood glue, which would have bound the pieces together permanently and sealed off any gaps. Because I was working alone and there's no one to hold the pieces for me, I used this wall to keep the panel upright and absorb the impact when I hammered. To start off, I applied wood glue where the outer frame side and bottom panels will have made contact. Then held the pieces together with a 2 inch nail in the middle. After adjusting so they form a 90 degree angle, I drove in the wood screws on each side. This approach ensured that each joint was strong and steady. Next, I did the same approach to join the side panel and the top panel. Then I flipped the entire thing over against the wall so I could work on this other side. After assembling the outer frame, I measured and drew guidelines along the top and bottom panels so I could accurately position and fasten the inner vertical panels. To ensure symmetry, I joined the vertical panels close to the center first, then worked myself outwards. When working with plywood, it cannot be avoided that some of its layers or plies would occasionally split apart. Times like these, wood glue and clamps are my best friends. And since I have very limited materials, I needed to salvage every piece that I could. While waiting for the glue to dry, I thought it prudent to do a final check if my spaces were right for the plates. And so far, so good. Once the glue had completely dried, this mainframe was officially completed.
The next steps would have been to cut and attach the horizontal inner panels. Then install wooden veneer strips, also known as liston in Filipino. The veneer will have two purposes. One was to give the structure a more professional look, and two was to serve as a stopper to prevent the plates from sliding off. Then I would have sanded everything down to a smooth finish before finally coating the entire structure with white primer and finishing paint. Unfortunately, none of those are in this video because a series of events prevented me from actually doing them. You see, the plan was for me to finish the project when we came back to visit the weekend after next. But there came another spike in COVID cases which eventually prompted the government to implement another round of lockdowns. As a family, we also agreed not to visit one another until such time when all of us were fully vaccinated, lockdown or no lockdown. So the weeks turned into several months until one time when there was no lockdown, my mom-in-law was able to hire a local carpenter to finish the project and finally install her long-overdue collectible plate shelf.